Hello and welcome to uh, our fifth live LinkedIn session with Hotel Spider. Uh, today with me I have Yannick Blue Ando, our CTO, and for the Hello. very first Hi. time we have a special guest in the person of Jerry Geisman from Digit, from a, a very cool web agency from Basel, Switzerland. So the topic today will be Google Analytics. What can we learn from website tracking? Why would you need it? And can you do it without it? That's basically the, one of the biggest questions. So it's a live session. If you guys have questions, and I really hope that you do have questions, just uh, ask them. And uh, Yannick, he will monitor your questions and we'll try to answer them. So let's jump into this one immediately. What is Google Analytics? Google Analytics is a tool to track website traffic and uh, user behavior on your website. It was launched in 2005 by Google, who then bought it from another company, but since then has taken it to a completely different level. So they track uh, website activity, such as session durations. How many pages are people visiting once they're on your website? How quickly do they jump off? What is the bound rate for individuals? And where do the people actually come from? And that one is really one of the most important ones. So you can see where do people come from and what do we want to do? Now, you might wonder why, why are we talking about uh, Google Analytics rather than some other players such as uh, Adobe Analytics, Mixpanel, there, you've got Hotspot, and there's so many more. Basically, it's because with roughly 30 million websites, yes, 30 million websites, Google Analytics is just the most used tool. It's free, it's very powerful, and it's a Google tool whether or not you like it. But it has some very cool features that we just want to jump into. Um, but before we actually tackle and take a look at what's behind the scenes, uh, Yannick, maybe you want to tell us a bit more how one needs to integrate Google Analytics. Yeah, so first just to, to explain how it works on a technical level, uh, like technical level, uh, Google Analytics is relying on a bit of JavaScript code that is placed on your website and this code is then executed when visitors arrive on your uh, or interact with your website and this code is this is then sending information to google servers about the visitor system and their behaviors and so on and uh, google is also relying on cookies which are bits of information stored on the computers of the visitors to track the visitors origin and navigation so in other words, also to, to, to distinguish between uh, the different visitors. And the data that is sent uh, to the Google servers is then providing you information about the geographic location of the visitors, their browser, uh, the system they are using, uh, be it mobile or computers, and also which pages they are visiting on your website. And this data is then aggregated and displayed here where you can see in the in the Google Analytics console. And you can have then different reports based on uh, the behavior of the users or the acquisition channels and so on. And uh, with newer website technologies, uh, you can also track specific actions like uh, when, when the user is clicking on a specific buttons or the words they are using in, in the search field of your own website. Uh, or the products that are added to an e-commerce website, uh, shopping carts, for example. And then to, to integrate these analytic uh, tools to your own website, uh, all you have to do, so the first step, which is <laughs> obvious, is that you have to create a Google Analytics account by going, uh, visiting the analytics.google.com uh, webpage. And once you have your account, uh, you, you have to find this, what is called the tracking code that you can find here in the admin uh, panel. You have this tracking info here and here you find the tracking code. And uh, from this page here, you have then this uh, bit of JavaScript code, which is the small snippet you have to copy and paste on your website source code. 
Uh, usually, nowadays, your website will be built on the CMS, the Content Management System, like WordPress or Joomla, or hosted on a, or a hosted CMS like Wix or Squarespace, for example. And you can easily integrate Google Analytics in those tools, uh, either natively or with widely used uh, plugins. And in such cases, all you have to do uh, in most cases is to, to copy this tracking ID, which is the unique ID of your website, on the plugin uh, settings page. And this, um, this code then identifies all the requests that are sent to, to Google server. And if you're working with a, with a company to manage your website, like uh, Digit, uh, Cherry's company, you, you can ask them to, to do the setup for you. And the, the last step, which is important to in the setup of all, all Google Analytics stuff, is, the, is that the use of UTM parameters that are specific tags uh, you add to the link you are using to to send traffic to your uh, to your website, for example, in, on a Facebook uh, post or in Instagram photo, or an email campaign you are sending to your customers, and those tags uh, you will help Google Analytics to distinguish between the sources uh, of the visitors. So you you have tags to identify the campaigns or the on the specific post, um, and also they are very useful when you when you work with paid ads on on Google or other uh, advertisement uh, systems, and um, and yeah, so this is the this is also an important step not to to overlook when you when you set up your Google Analytics. So maybe maybe I gonna add and go on a little bit um, regarding why is um, the data so important. So in the end, it's all about data, and um, I think the most important thing is that marketing activities in the hospitality industry are um, pretty expensive, not only on spend um, on ad spend, but also on the manpower you invest in your marketing activities and uh, those costs need a return and to optimize that return we need to make data driven decisions and we need to optimize our activities and therefore google analytics is the base for all digital but also not digital marketing activities um, herefore in the hospitality industry, we have one big problem. Um, we always think in the wrong direction when it comes to the website and the marketing activity. For sure, we would like to sell, but um, we normally use the website as information platform, or we think about that it's an information platform. But in the end, it's nothing else than an e-commerce system, because the goal of our website is to sell rooms. So we need to think in the direction like, for example, Booking.com does it, but also Amazon, eBay, however. We just need to think in the direction of the e-commerce platform. So we need to make our decision data-driven and revenue optimized. Overall, if we have a look at the um, Google Amazon, To navigate a little bit. So first of all, we have the overview of um, the actual data: users, generated revenue, conversion rate, sessions. Next week, it's the active users. Down here, we have information about the source of our traffic, sessions by country, and sessions by day time. <clears throat> when we go a little bit deeper into it, we have on the left hand side the navigation. I think one of the biggest problems um, that people are yeah, not that into Google Analytics if they are not um, professionals in marketing 
is that it's overwhelming. It's too much. One tip I can give you guys is we have here the five major information. So for example, if we go into the audience, don't go too deep into it. Always work with the overview. So if we go to the overview, we already get the most inf uh, important information about the users, sessions, how many pages they looked at, how many pages per session, our session duration, how long have they been on the website, and so on. You always have the possibility to change your daytime. So for example, we want to get some further information. Let me open the other end of the window um, from last year, 1st of September until end of the year. Then we have the possibility to compare it to the previous period, but also previous year to get some further information about in which direction our activities went. After that, for example, we would like to know where does the, the paid search um, users come from or the organic search and get some more information about it. So we have the possibility always to navigate from this overview dashboard we are in into a more detailed one. So when we click on pay search, you see that we jump into all traffic into the channels. And that's the easiest way to navigate. So to get more out of, um, of the data, you need to ask you the right question. There is so many data within Google Analytics, but what is important for us to know? So for example, what we can do is we're going to have a look at where do the people come from. So we go into the location overview. Now we have plenty of different countries. We have, for example, Switzerland, which is leading, and we have Germany, United Kingdom. But now, what is the right question? For sure, it looks like Switzerland is our top client on the website because they generate the most revenue and we have the most users from there. But for sure we have, because all our marketing activities target on the Swiss market. So maybe we're going to want to go into a different market. Which market could be interesting? If we go on the right hand side to the e-commerce conversion rate, we see, for example, that here, Italy has 2.12 conversion rate, generates pretty good revenue for only like what do we have? 1% of the use of Switzerland. So maybe it's interesting for this also to concentrate a little bit more on the Italy market and have a look what the possibilities are there. If you ask the questions like that and go into the data within specific questions you, need, uh, you want to have answered, you can get very interesting information out of it where you know where to focus with your marketing activities, and where you can make sure that you will have in the future an even bigger return on the invest on your marketing activity. Hi. Well, thank you, Cherry, for that uh, overview. Uh, you, you just spoke about return on investment. So that means that in either way, you need a visitor to be converted into a reservation. So, Yannick, um, you as our CTO, you might maybe you can show people how we at Hotel Spider do it to integrate Google Analytics easily into our uh, web booking engine. Yeah, sure. So, um, so Hotel Spider booking engine, like as, as most of the booking engines, are natively supporting uh, Google Analytics, um, uh, Google Analytics uh, integration. So, what you usually have to do is to copy this tracking code that we ha we have seen before, that you will use for your website, and then you use the same tracking code because it's the ID of your website and so of your uh, booking engine as well. And you use the same tracking code, and you then um, copy that to the extranet of Hotel Spider, where we, you have the different settings for the booking engine. And you will find uh, you will find the field 
where you can paste your Google Analytics uh, tracking code. Um, this, uh, you just have to copy the, that, save the settings, and then you will see the first data flowing directly to your Google Analytics um, console. To yeah, uh, to validate that it's working, then you you can search for your hotel online, uh, go to your website in the in the results, and uh, using the real time report on uh, on Google Analytics, you you should be able to find yourself. We could say by uh, filtering on the location or the city of the visitor or something, and then uh, then you can go on your website and then use the link that are redirecting to the um, to the uh, booking engine, and you should still be in this uh, in the same real time reporting. And uh, finally, you can make a test reservation. And in the transaction part of the Google Analytics report, you will find yourself uh, the, the your transaction you've just made, and you can track back the Google search being at the origin of, of the booking. And um, yeah, and, and you. I, I, as a short uh, disclosure, uh, the hotels, they will find two integrations of Google Analytics because we, of course, also track what people are doing on our uh, web booking engine so that globally for all our hotels, we can also learn what is happening on a booking engine and optimize it so that it gets to uh, the best possible conversion. Exactly. Um, talk, talking about conversion, uh, Cherry, you have some data to to show us basically on mm -hmm. conversion that's right um because that's one of the most important part is integration um from google analytics into your booking engine and luckily for example uh, you guys from hotel spider made it that easy to integrate it um, because that's the base of everything so um a lot of hoteliers, they're going to have a look at the data within the channel manager, within the booking engine, which is super interesting. But in the end, it's only a small part of what is really, um, what is the data we really need. Because in the end, if the booking engine has a good conversion rate, that's great. But we do not know what is the conversion rate of the website. And our marketing activities normally lead to the website and not to the booking engine. So for example, within the booking engine, we can have conversion rate of 5%, but within the website of only 0.1. So it gives us a completely wrong picture. Um, if we want to have a deeper look at um, the whole conversion rate, the first step is to integrate <clears throat> Google Analytics into your um, booking engine like Yannick just showed us. Afterwards, you have, first of all, already on the home screen, the information about generated revenue and the conversion rate. And from that point on, we can go, for example, into the acquisition overview where we see different channels and we get the information about the conversion rate, transaction, but also the generated revenue. So we know from now on, for example, okay, the most revenue is generated over organic search. We have a good generate revenue over paid search, etc. Very interested is if we go into the conversion dashboard. Here we have, first of all, on the goal, a conversion overview. And the funnel visualization, and there it gets interesting. In the funnel visualization, we see now the people where they jump into the booking engine from which side on our website and at which point they jump out. And each step of the booking engine has which conversion rate. And like that, we can start to optimize. For example, if we see at the service selection, a lot of people jump out, maybe it's a little bit overwhelming. If it comes to the customer form, maybe we grab data like address and a lot of people jump out again. Maybe we're going to have a look what happened if we only use like the most important information. 
and you wouldn't believe it, but the difference is huge. So have a look, try a little bit out, try the way A, have a look what happened, try the way B, and look which one performs better to optimize ongoing your um, generate revenue and the conversion rate. Another very interesting part within Google Analytics, which a lot of people don't know, is the assistant conversion. So Google is pretty smart, as we already know. So we do not only have the possibility to see where do the conversion come from, we can also have a look on which path they come from. For example, I'm going to have a first look at your hotel website or an ad from Google Ads. But I have to ask my girlfriend first if um, we can go on holiday there, if she also has some holiday um, over this week. So I'm going to close the window. I'm going to have a talk with her. She's super excited to come to your hotel. So we would like to book it. But now I already have the address. So I'm going to go directly on your website. Now we see that we have last click conversion and my reservation will go into this data. But I have this first connection to your hotel or Google app. So part of the revenue will fall into the pay search assistant conversion revenue. So that gives us the possibility to not only see the, where did the reservation come from, we also see which um, channels are supporting those reservations. And that's very interesting if it comes to social media generated revenue, because in the hospitality industry, normally it's not the last click conversion, it's always a system, it's a channel which inspires people, and the same, for example, with newsletter. So therefore, if you would like to analyze the data and the return on invest on your marketing spend, not only ad spend, also the manpower you invest, always have a look at this overview to see the effective return on the invest for the different channels. Um, Jerry, you mentioned a bit of A-B testing as well in a way to track a bit to see what is working on our website. Uh, Yannick, I know that you have been using A-B testing on our booking engine uh, in combination with uh, well, con conversion results measured in Google Analytics. Can you maybe tell us a bit about the, what you tried and what was the outcome of these? Yeah, sure. So. With uh, as as you said, we are using Google Analytics uh, natively in the in the booking engine. So both for the integration of the hotel's Google Analytics account and also for our own account, where we can get data as well about the visitors on different hotels. Uh, we have uh, then used the Google A/B testing solution that are uh, that are part of the analytics product that you can use to show different things. And uh, so, for example, we have uh, we have used uh, we have used A/B testing to see differences in, uh, for example, the the fear of, of missing out. We we have called that when when only a few rooms of a certain type are, are uh, remaining available for a given day. Um, also on. Uh, of course, on the once the user is entering the conversion funnel, as we call it. So once they are starting to um, uh, to select which room they want to book, uh, for example, the order of the of the services are quite important with the the the, the, the food or uh, rate. Uh, meal plan related services being shown first. It, it's quite important and. Uh, as Thierry said as well, we have um, made some uh, some different tests about uh, asking the user for their address or the visitor for their address. Um, or and so on the for example uh, having what what we need to show so the minimum information we need to show on the last conversion step which is where you need to, usually you need to enter your credit card. For example, for a, a fully refundable rate, maybe you don't even need the card to make the first 
reservation action. So in that case, uh, you are free to not ask for the card. And for uh, other rate plans that are, for example, non-refundable, when you need to trigger a payment, uh, I don't know if we have one here, yes. Um, when you, you need to trigger a payment directly, uh, during the booking process, then what you show uh, as a, what you show as uh, as information uh, around the credit card form is quite important. So, for example, we have validated that reminding the users about the cancellation conditions is quite important at that step. Uh, it has some impact on the conversion of this specific page. Uh, but then you can be uh, so you can you can use very uh, like very different solutions with a different uh, uh, display of the same information, but also uh, small things like the copy on the button or the the way you present the, cons the cancellation conditions and so on. So all those things can be A/B tested, and this is what we do. Um, continuously on the product to improve the conversion for uh, all the hotels that are using the product. We've seen a lot of things now already about uh, Google Analytics. But the one that we're currently talking about is Google Universal Analytics. But we all know that every single product, especially in IT, has a life cycle. Uh, Jerry, there are rumors about Google Universal Analytics disappearing, right? What is going to happen? Yep. So um, Universal Analytics will only exist until 1st of July next year. You will still be able to enter Universal Analytics, but there will be no more new data. So um, from 1st of July next year on, there will only be Google Analytics 4, um, which has a completely new process of generating data, of um, uh, how it proceeds with the data, and it gives you completely new possibilities. Everything comes from um, the whole cookie topic, which is pretty huge at the moment. And um, it's a little bit the answer from um, Google to the third party cookies, which will um, disappear um, during this year or by end of um, 2022. Um, but there's one very important thing which everybody should keep in mind. Um, for sure, it's 1st of July next year. Um, but if you would like to compare your data still, um, you need to prepare yourself right now. Um, because you will only get data into Google Analytics from that moment on when you do the connection. So if you set up Google Analytics by June next year, you will have like new data in Google Analytics 4 from June next year, but all the old data is in Google Analytics, uh, Universal Analytics, sorry, um, but you are not able to compare it. You have like four dashboards, but as they are completely different, it's pretty difficult to compare the data and um, take some, some decisions out of it. So my tip, um, set up Google Analytics for until 1st of July this year, that you have the possibility from July next year on to compare it or compare the data with like the year, um, the last year. It doesn't matter if the setup is not perfect from the first day on, but from that moment on, when you set it up, you already get data into the new Google Analytics. And from that moment on, you have the possibility um, to take um, out the statistics you need and to make sure that also in the future you have the possibility to make your decisions relate on um, yeah, good data and uh, real data. All right. Um, Yannick, are we already ready for Google Analytics 4? Yes, sure. So um, as, as you can see on the settings page uh, of the Spider Booking 4 uh, booking engine, 
we have both the Google uh, Universal Tracking Code input and we have the, another input for the Google Analytics 4 tracking code, which, which starts with a capital G. It's not exactly the same format. Uh, and uh, as Thierry said, that it is important that you can be able to use both at the same time. So if you input both codes, then both systems are updated. So both tracking are in place in the same, um, in the same instance of your booking engine, and then you can easily compare data between Universal and the version four of uh, Google Analytics that is uh, that is now available. Yannick, from the audience. Yeah. So, um, there is no, no questions now but in, in the chat. So if you have any questions, feel free to, to send them in now. Well, if there are no uh, questions at this point in time, I mean, this is posted live on LinkedIn, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Uh, feel free to put in your questions in the, the comments below the, the video. Uh, if not now, also later, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. So we're now going to conclude this uh, live session, our fifth live session. We'll be live again on Wednesday, the 8th of June, also still at 10 o'clock. Uh, at that point in time, we'll talk with uh, Elisha, our hotel techie, on how you should prepare yourself on switching channel manager. Is it easy? Is it complicated? How much time will it take? And we'll have one of our onboarding specialists with us to show that maybe it's not that complicated if you have the right service at the same time. If you have any additional questions, topics that you would like us to, to treat, feel free to, to send them in. Uh, we'll prep some content for you guys. And uh, we're always there to help and to bring in more information out into the hospitality market. I would like to send out a great thank right now to, to Cherry, who is our uh, also our internal Google Analytics uh, guru. Thank you very much for, uh, for your input on all this. Uh, Yannick, thank you very much for your taking time out of your very busy schedule. And, uh, well, this is it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ich habe Janik rausgeschmissen. Trotz, um mal wieder zurückzukommen. Hey, ähm, nochmals ganz, ganz herzlichen Dank für die Einladung. Gerne. Ich meine, du weißt ja so viel mehr von, von dieses Thema als wir. Also ich finde... Ähm ich finde es so ein spannendes, spannendes Thema, aber so schwer, um in der Kürze auf den Punkt zu bringen. Aber ich glaube, äh, gerade der Mix auch mit, mit Yannick, wo dann die Verbindung eben zur Buchungsmaschine gemacht hat, super cool. Ja, es ist, es ist richtig schwer. Ich, ähm, 
ich habe parallel das mein, mein Hobby, ich bin freiwilliger Feuer, äh, bei der Freiwilligen Feuerwehr mhm. und nach, nach 20 Jahren gebe ich jetzt auch Unterricht, das ist seit äh, fast äh, drei Jahren und da, da merke ich auch, äh, du musst das Thema so einfach wie möglich halten mhm. äh, und das ist nicht immer einfach, vor allem wenn man selber extrem viel vom Thema weiß. Ja. ja, vor allem den Dinge, die selbstverständlich sind für einen, wo man gar nicht, teilweise gar nicht überlegt, dass es vielleicht für den, der zuhört, gar nicht so verständlich ist. Und, ähm, aber eben, also, ähm, ich glaube, äh, das Wichtigste gerade bei solchen Thematiken ist, ähm, die Leute zu teasen. So, dass sie, ja. dass sie wie sich angesprochen fühlen und denken, oh, da muss ich was machen und sich dann selber anfangen einzuarbeiten. Und wenn man das schafft, dann wird es spannend. Ja. Let's uh, switch back to English. Now that Yannick is uh, yeah. online. Uh, sorry, Yannick, I think I actually kicked you out instead of you doing the force manipulation. So, uh, how did it go for you? That's fine, yeah. That's fine. I think you know, it was, yeah, all good. <laughs> we'll uh, hear the feedback from uh, the others internally and uh, see what kind of feedback we get on uh, on social media. Um, uh -huh. We we do have one thumbs up. I can't see from who who it is. Oh, hang on, I think we're still online. <laughs> 